Dr. Tim Davis. Immortality was always God's plan for humanity. There's a process that goes on in our bodies. It's called apoptosis. Now, what is apoptosis? It is a system that God put in place in our bodies where a cell has an ability to undergo voluntary death. Our cells, if they're damaged, injured with a chemical or with disease process or with trauma, our cells are able to recognize that they've been damaged, damaged beyond repair, and they undergo a voluntary death. That's apoptosis. That's one way a cell will do that. A second way a cell will do that in our bodies is if they've lived past their expiration date. Our cells are only designed to be functional and viable for a certain number of days. It's like food on a grocery shelf that has an expiration date on it that you use by this date, and if you don't use it by that date, you shouldn't use it because there's something wrong with it. When a cell reaches that date in our bodies, the expiration date, they undergo voluntary cell death. And our bodies are well equipped to deal with this. We have white blood cells called macrophages. When these cells do undergo this death, the white blood cells pick up the debris and they carry it away. And when that cell does that, when a cell voluntarily dies, newness is able to come. In other words, when a cell goes through apoptosis, the body immediately regenerates with a new cell. In that way, there was always a design for newness in our bodies constantly, that no matter what would happen, the cell that was damaged or diseased or, or past its date would undergo self-destruction. The macrophages would carry away the debris and a new cell would be produced. This process is dependent on the cells to do what they're supposed to do in order for newness to come. Do you understand? If a cell refuses, there can be no newness. This is fascinating. Listen to the theology here. Voluntary death is necessary in order for newness to come in our bodies. What did Jesus say? If you try and hold on to your life, you lose it. What did Jesus say about a grain of wheat? Unless a grain of wheat dies and falls into the ground, it remains a single grain of wheat. But if it dies and falls into the ground, it produces a lot of new. See, that system is perfect. And that system would keep your bodies perfect. We would never age. Because what we see in one another with age and with disease are cells that refuse to undergo voluntary death. They refuse. And they stay way past their expiration date. And they function in a physiological way that they're not supposed to function. If you would go into the grocery store and you would pick up food that was past its expiration date, you would still be able to eat that food, wouldn't you? But it would be damaging to you. So that's what happens to our bodies. See, that's what happened in the garden. That's what happened when the rebellion of man reached clear down to the cellular level. Is that not amazing? Clear down to the cellular level, our cells rebelled and refuse to undergo, many times, apoptosis. They won't die. Cancer is a cell that won't die. And when a cell doesn't die, it starts to grow in a, in a way it never was intended to, and it starts to affect all the cells around it. It just won't go away. That's disease. Cancer are cells that refuse to die. And they become this monster almost. When we are sick and when we age, what you're seeing are cells that refuse at the cellular level, the rebellion refuse to undergo voluntary death. That's how we age and that's how eventually we do die. No newness without voluntary death. There was always a seed time and harvest. There was always a spring and a winter. There was always in our bodies that same process. What does Paul like in our earthly house to? A tent. Doesn't it feel that way sometimes? How stable is a tent? And Paul says, we know something. We the testified to ones, the kindness of death. We never will die. We will experience physical death. And that's the difference. And Paul says, this earthly house that we have, which is like a tent, he said, if it's destroyed, if we do die, he says, we have a building from God. That tent has to be destroyed. That tent has to die. That tent has to experience physical death because without that voluntary physical death, we have no newness. What kind of bodies must this be, like Isaiah says, that when we appear on the landscape and God's creation sees us coming, that the mountains and the hills will break into song before us and the trees of the field will clap their hands. A house not made with hands and it's eternal in the heaven, future hope, because the world doesn't have that hope. 
We are the only faith on the planet that has this kind of theology. We're the only ones that say we are going to be future embodied human beings standing again on this earth. And that's the groaning. That's the longing. We're longing for that newness. We groan to put on a house that is eternal in the heavens so that our humanity continues. We groan for another reason. We groan with the world because we're dealing with the process of death and we're dealing with the knowledge of death. Do you know that we are the only species in creation that knows we're going to die? And we also know that we were meant for more. There's the groaning. We groan because we're burdened. We're burdened with that knowledge. We know we're going to die. The world is groaning in the same way. We join them in this. Why do we want to be clothed with the Holy Spirit? So that mortality, mortality means that we are undergoing the process of death and we have the knowledge of death. That's what it means to be mortal. That's a fascinating description of mortality. Jesus and Paul don't even call mortality life. They never call it life. They call it something else. Jesus says, I came to give you life, give it to you abundantly in John 10, 10. He knows that what we're experiencing right now is a burdened, groaning, longing for what is truly life. The reason we need to be clothed with the Holy Spirit is so that this system works. This system that God has in place to deal with rebellion at the cellular level requires two things. It requires our physical death, but it requires us to be clothed with the Holy Spirit. And Paul says, we long to be clothed with that Holy Spirit so that mortality may be swallowed up by life. And if the Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then that same Spirit that brought Christ back from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life. He gives you the Spirit as a down payment. Instead of this tent, you're going to have a building. Instead of living in a house that is vulnerable, subject to disease and deconstruction and decay, you're going to be living in a house that is a building from God and is impervious, eternal in the heavens. Nothing can touch you. That's a beautiful system, but it requires voluntary death in order for that to occur. No newness can occur without this system. That's the kindness of death. You know, we talk about the kindness of physical death, and that may seem paradoxical to you, but imagine living in bodies that are groaning with the futility of life, groaning with the process of death, groaning with the knowledge that we're going to die, and never being released from that groaning, never being able to die. See, that's the kindness of physical death. That's how God deals with the rebellion that happened in the garden. God said you're going to die, and actually it's going to be a gift for you. Because if you did not die, we will be dealing with these things for all eternity. Our bodies would continue to go into degeneration and decay. Our bodies would continue to have pain and suffering. And the system that God has in place is mortality swallowed up by life when you're clothed with the Holy Spirit, that this tent is going to be destroyed and God's going to replace it with a building. I see patients every day and I can tell when they're getting out of their car, making their way into my office, that they're groaning. They're groaning with the process of death and they struggle against that. Look at what is instituted for us to deal with the process of death. We have hospitals that are as big as cities, all to deal with mortality. Honestly, the tools that we have to throw at this, so minimal. This is an inexorable process that is going to occur. The most we can do is give them minutes of relief from the groaning, minutes of relief from the burden. The world has nothing to hold on to to try and patch up the tent. That's all they've got. And they know that it's futile. And that brings anxiety and depression. And that brings hopelessness into their life because everybody does experience physical death. That's what we know, and we're the only ones that know it. That is God's call to humanity, giving us that knowledge, giving us that burden. If we never had the burden of the knowledge that we were going to die, no one would seek the Creator in salvation. It is a gift of God that He said, you are going to die. We groan with that knowledge. We think of Jesus. His body was in the tomb on Saturday, but Jesus Himself was very much alive. There's the intermediate state. Even though Paul says, we're away from the body, we're at home with the Lord, those that have gone before, they're confident and satisfied. They're conscious, they're sentient, their memories are intact, they're at peace. 
for we must all appear before the tribunal of Christ, so that each may be repaid for what he has done in the body. What you do now matters, lasts, counts. God gave us these bodies to serve him now. God gave us these bodies to house his spirit and to function in his kingdom and the reward ever increasing, impervious, eternal bodies that will reign, rule, and have dominion here on this earth. What did Jesus say? If you try and hold on to your life, you lose it.